Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm bringing you my Victoba TBR. So if you don't know what Victoba is, I will leave lots of links down below to tell you more about it. Victoba is a month-long readathon that takes place every October and is all about reading and celebrating Victorian literature in the month of October. It's hosted by me, by Kate Howe, Marissa from Blank Me Bookish, Petra Yu and Roz from Scanny Dadling about the books. I'll link all of our channels and announce some videos down below. Um, and today I thought I would talk you through my Victoba TBR, which I should really call my Victoba part of the possibilities because it is ridiculous in size. Basically, I started to come up with my TBR and it got way too long um, and then I had 28 books on my TBR and then I tried really hard to go down because I know that I cannot read 28 books in a month. I doubt I can read 15. I think 15 would be pushing it. Um, definitely can't read 28, but I found it really hard to narrow down my TBR so I thought I would just make a TBR pile of possibilities video talking through the 28 things that I might read in October. Um, I think probably I will read between 10 and 15 of these. Some of them are bigger priorities than others, but I can't really decide what ones I'm actually going to read now. So I think I'll just see where I get to in Victoria itself, um, see how many books I actually read. Um, also, as I've kind of mentioned before, now that I work freelance, like my work stream is quite um, variable. So I feel like I'm not super busy in October like I think it should be a month where I get a bit more time to read than some months but it's also a bit unpredictable so who knows we shall see. Let me just talk you through some Victorian books that I'm excited to read at some point some of which I will be reading in October this year. <laughs> this year as every year we have five challenges for Victober and um, so I have picked out some books that I know fit the challenges um, and then there are some other books that I'm not sure whether they fit any challenge but they might um, which I'll talk about at the end. So the first challenge is Kate's challenge which is to read a Victorian work featuring a stranger or an outsider. I reckon quite a lot of the books on my pile of possibilities will feature a stranger or outsider in some way because it's quite a common thing to um, feature in a Victorian novel um, but the one that I have picked specifically for this challenge is Night and Morning by Edward Bulwer Lytton. This is a novel from 1840 that I've got on my Kindle. Um, I've been meaning to read something by Edward Bulwer Lytton for a while because he is an author who was very very popular within the Victorian period but isn't read so much now. I don't know very much about Night and Morning but apparently it's about a vicar who is passing through a new town, um, like a small village in the countryside, and it's very different to the place he usually lives, so he has a bit of a culture shock. Um, so that sounds kind of interesting and like it would fit for the theme of an outsider. So hopefully I'll read this in Victoria, but we'll see. And then my challenge this year is to read a work of Victorian new woman fiction. Um, and I think this challenge is one of the reasons why my pile of possibilities is slightly out of control, because I'm really interested in the new woman movement in the Victorian period and I want to read a lot from it. And one of the reasons why I picked this challenge this year is because there are a lot of books um, that fit this category that I really want to read. And I did a lot of research um, about the new woman movement for my Natsum video and found so many more books that I want to read. So I have a bunch of possibilities for this challenge. I will read some of them. I will definitely not read all of them because there are too many. So one thing I might read for this challenge is Red Pottage by Mary Cholmondeley. I've heard really good things about this one. This is a novel from 1899. Um, I don't know too much about it, but I've heard very good things about it. But I'm also really keen to read The Beth Book by Sarah Grand from 1897, which is a bit of a coming of age story about a um, young woman becoming a writer. Um, and I've heard great things about this from Elizabeth at a Literary Princess. So I really, really want to read this one. I would say that the Beth book is one of my like big priorities this year but it is um, over 500 pages and it's on the longer side so I'm really hopeful I'll get to it but we shall see. Another book I'd really like to read for this challenge is Diana of the Crossways by George Meredith from 1885. This is a little bit shorter but George Meredith's writing does tend to be quite dense um, so we'll see. I would really like to read this but I'm not 100% certain whether I'll get to this in October um, but this is George Meredith's um, new woman novel based Based on the life of a real historical figure so I think this will be a really interesting read. And then I have this um, and this will probably be a priority as I have a physical copy of it um, and most things I'm reading for Victoba I'll be reading on my Kindle um, the out of print and I can only get um, digital editions or um, it's very expensive to get um, a physical edition um, but I found a physical edition of A Struggle for Fame by Charlotte Riddell which I'm quite excited to read and this is quite a nice cover for like an um, undiscovered out of print reprinted classic um, so I'm very excited to read this one. 
done. It's 400 pages, but the text is very small, um, so we'll see whether or not I get to it. But I gather that A Struggle for Fame is a new woman novel about a woman um, trying to make her living as a writer. Um, and I really like this cover, so I'm going to try and read this in October. I think this will be a priority because I have a physical edition, but you know, we will see. Then there are two other new woman novels that I think sound wonderful that I'm fairly certain I won't read in October, um, but I found it really hard to remove them from my TBR, so I'm going to mention them anyway. Um, and that is Miss Brown by Vernon Lee from 1884, which is a kind of novel about the aesthetic movement and the new woman novel. I've been meaning to read this for ages. This was on my Victorian long-term TBR um, video that I put up like a year and a half ago. And um, so I should really prioritize this over like A Struggle for Fame, which I only heard about recently, but also I kind of am more excited for A Struggle for Fame, but there we go. And then also when I was doing research for um, my Victoria announcement video, I heard about The Wing of Azriel by Mona Kerr from 1889, which is a gothic new woman novel, which combines feminist elements and gothic fiction and that sounds wonderful doesn't it so I kind of really want to read that that's only like 250 pages apparently um and I recently read another book by Mona Caird which was like quite an easy read um like her writing style is quite smooth so maybe I'll get to it then finally because you know I haven't picked enough things for my challenge yet um there are two plays which I think would fit for my challenge um which I'm really keen to read and I'm pretty sure I will read these in October because it's very quick to read plays I'm hoping I'll manage to like take a day off work and like just spend the day reading Victorian plays um, because there are three Victorian plays on this list that I'm really keen to read um, to the fit for this challenge um, and they are Afternoon by Weeder which I know very little about but I've heard interesting things about Weeder as a writer and she's not a writer who I've read before and then also Condida by George Bernard Shaw. I really like George Bernard Shaw's plays and this one is supposed to be um, kind of part of the New Women movement so I'm curious to read it. That is a lot of books for my challenge but there we go. The next challenge, Marissa's challenge, is to read a Victorian work by an author who is new to you and I've already mentioned a lot of books by Victorian authors who are new to me. Edward Wall, Lytton, Mary Trelombly, Sarah Brand, Charlotte Riddell, Vernon Lee, they're all new to me um, but there are three other books that I haven't mentioned already um, that I don't think fit into any other challenges that are by new to me authors so I thought I'd mention them here and um, one is a play which is Charlie's Aunt by Brandon Thomas which I think is a farcical like comedy from um, 1892 um, which Roz from Scally Dadling about the books and Tilly from Tilly Shelf did a video on I want to say last October, but it might have been two Victobers ago. What well, they did one of their discussing drama videos where they talked about this play um, and it sounded quite interesting and I'm keen to read more Victorian plays. So hopefully I'll read that in October. But I'd also love to read In the Roar of the Sea by Sabin Barr and Gould from 1892. This is a book that comes very, very, very highly recommended from Kate Howe, um, who I know loves it a lot. I don't actually know whether I'm likely to get to it in October because there are so many other books I want to read, but I am also keen to read it. And I I think it was also one of the books I mentioned in my long-term Victorian literature TBR, which was a while ago now, so I feel like I should read it, but also there are too many books in this list, so we'll see. <laughs> and another book I may or may not read in Victober is um, The Adventures of Mr. Verdant Green by Cuthbert Bede, which is a comic novel from 1853. I don't know too much about this, but it looks like it's less than 200 pages and will be quite funny, which might be quite good for like a change of pace. I feel like I have quite a lot of serious books on my TBR this year, so maybe like Charlie's Aunt and The Adventures of Mr. Verdant Green would be quite nice like palate cleansers, um, so we'll see. Texture's challenge is to read a Victorian first person narrative. Um, now there may be other books on my pile of possibilities that are in first person, um, but there are two that I know are in first person, so I thought I'd mention those. Um, and one is My Flirtations by Ella Hepworth Dixon, um, which might also fit for my challenge, I'm not completely certain, um, but My Flirtations is apparently a very short novella, it's only about 100 pages, a first person, about um, a young woman and her flirtations um, I suppose um, and her meetings with lots of flawed men. This sounds quite fun um, and someone on the discord server for Victoria was saying that they read it recently and really enjoyed it that it was really quick and that it was first person um, so I thought this would be a good thing to throw into my very long pile of possibilities because I could do it with some short books. And then the other thing that is on my Victoria pile of possibilities that is in first person and I will definitely start in Victoria but will almost certainly not finish in Victoria is this and this is David 
Regina Copperfield by Charles Dickens. So over the last year I have been hosting the Mega Dickens Read Along where we're reading um, the novels of Charles Dickens in publication order and October and November's book is David Copperfield. I won't be reading this physically, I will be listening to it on audiobook as I have been doing with all of my Mega Dickens Read Along reads. I do think I'll finish this during October because there are other books I want to listen to on audiobook um, in October which I'll talk about in a minute um, and as this read long is for October and November, I'll probably listen to most of David Copperfield in November so that I can focus on newer things for October. But I probably will start it in October, I would have thought. David Copperfield is um, the story of the life of a young man called David Copperfield. We follow him from his birth, literally from his birth, um, into his sort of um, late youth, I would guess. He's probably like in his 30s maybe by the time the book ends maybe in his late 20s i can't exactly remember um and it basically looks at his adventures all the different people he meets and i think in many ways actually david copperfield is a book about class and social mobility um, and david copperfield kind of like moves through lots of different class positions in his life in a very interesting way which leads me nicely on to the next challenge ross's challenge which is to read a victorian work in which class features strongly which David Copperfield would definitely count for, but I have some other picks for that as well. So one book I'll definitely be reading this October, um, which definitely counts for Ross's challenge, is our group read, The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. I love The Way We Live Now a lot. It is one of my favourite Victorian novels, and I'm really, really excited to reread it. I'm also excited to listen to it on audiobook for the first time, because I've never listened to it before. This is um, a tale of class and money and messy families. And in fact, this book would also count for Kate's challenge because the book is kind of kicked off by um, the entrance into London society of a man called Mr. Melnott, who has a lot of money, but no one knows where he's made it from and no one knows much about him. But he has a lot of money, so everyone flocks to him. And it's kind of about all the people who surround him. And it's just a really fantastic book. So I'm very, very much looking forward to reading this one this October. Then another book I'm hoping to listen to on audiobook in October is Man and Wife by Wilkie Collins from 1870. I've read quite a lot of Wilkie Collins before and we have a bit of a hit and miss relationship. I love some of his books and other books by him like deeply frustrate me um, but I've heard really good things about Man and Wife so I'm hopeful. I know very little about Man and Wife by Wilkie Collins um, but that's fine. I always enjoy going into a Wilkie Collins novel not really knowing what to expect. I'm presuming from the title that it is about marriage and I did also listen to like the five minute sample on Audible um, and it sounds like it begins with two young women, um, one of whom is going to travel to India and one of whom um, is training to become a singer. And it sounded like these two young women who are friends are from a slightly different social backgrounds or like slightly different class backgrounds. So I feel like this is a book that's probably going to fit into Ross's challenge. So I'm looking forward to this one. Like I said, sometimes I really get on with Wilkie Collins and sometimes I don't. So we'll see what happens with Man and Wife. Then my next pick for Ross's challenge is Miss Meredith by Amy Levy from 1888. Um, and this is a very short novella. So hopefully I will manage to read this in October. And this is a book about a young Jewish girl who falls in love with her employer. Um, so I feel like class is definitely gonna be a feature in this book. I expect this might be able to count for my challenge as well. One of Amy Levy's other novels The Romance of a Shop is very much a new woman novel so I'll potentially be like looking for those themes in Miss Meredith too but um, I'm very excited about that one and then another book on my list um, which is another short one is this this is In Darkest London by Margaret Harkness um, and this would also count for Marissa's challenge as well another author I haven't read before and this is a work of social realism from 1889 and apparently it looks at like um, impoverished communities in the east end of London so that sounds very much like it's going to fit into Rosa's challenge um, and I'm excited to read this one then I picked one other book for Roz's challenge, um, which is Ease Ransom by George Gissing, which is a very short book. Apparently it's only like 120 pages from 1895. So George Gissing is an author who I really like and who I really want to read more by. Um, and in fact, there are three Victorian authors who I want to read everything by, who I'm like slowly working my way through, who are Anthony Trollope, George Gissing and Wilkie Collins. Um, so I kind of want to read something new by those three authors every Victober, um, which maybe is a bit ambitious. So therefore I picked a very short George Gissing book, which is Eve's Ransom. Um, I know very little about Eve's Ransom, but I think it's safe to say, I think it's a pretty safe bet to say that any George Gissing book is going to deal with class. Um, definitely in all of the work I've read by him so far, it is like 
one of the very central themes. And to be honest, I think probably quite a lot of the other books that I've mentioned for other challenges would fit into this too. Um, Condida by George Benishaw probably looks at class. A Struggle for Fame by Charlotte Riddell sounds like it might look at class. Um, the Victorians like to write about class a lot. <laughs> I feel like you could pretty much make an argument for most Victorian novels that they are in some way about class. In fact, saying that, I just looked down at my list of other books um, that I may or may not read in Victoria, which um, I didn't think fitted into any challenges and I realised two of them will absolutely fit into Ross's challenge. Um, one of which is Jessie Phillips' A Tale of the Present Day by Frances Trollope from 1842, which is a novel about workhouses, so definitely going to be a bit out of class. Um, this is another one on my long-term Victorian literature TBR that I just haven't got to yet and I would really like to read but I also feel like it's slightly less of a priority for Victoria, but we'll see. Another novel I'd really like to read, but I'm probably not going to get to it in Victoria, but it's only like 280 pages, so who knows, um, is An Unsocial Socialist by George Bernard Shaw from 1883. George Bernard Shaw is mostly known as a playwright, and I've read lots of his plays, and I really like his plays, but he also wrote um, this novel, An Unsocial Socialist, which is a great title, um, and I'm sure we'll deal with glass, and I would really like to read it, so... Maybe I will read it in October, but um, as you may already be able to tell, my TBR, my pile of possibilities is ridiculous and I will read a small selection of these books and that's fine. Finally, I have a few other random miscellaneous Victorian books, which may or may not work for one of the challenges, um, but I just don't know, so I thought I would just put them at the end. One book I'm really keen to read is The Phantom Ship by Frederick Marriott from 1839. This is a children's gothic novel about a phantom ship, so you know, that sounds pretty fun. I've read one book by Frederick Marriott before, um, The Children of the New Forest, which I quite liked but I didn't love, um, but I'm kind of interested to read something more by him um, and I haven't read that much 19th century children's literature so I think this should be an interesting read. And then another book I might get to this October is Fantasies by George MacDonald from 1858. Um, I'm not 100% certain whether this is a novel for children or adults or somewhere in between. George MacDonald wrote um, both books for children and for adults um, but Fantasies I gather is a bit fairy tale slash fantastical um, and one of the main reasons why this is on my Victoria TBR is because there's an audiobook of it um, and it looks like it's only about seven hours so that might be quite a nice thing to listen to amongst everything else. I often find now when I get to Victoria that it's quite hard for me to find audiobooks to listen to unless they're rereads because a lot of the Victorian literature I'm delving into now is a bit too obscure but Fantasies does seem to have an audiobook and um, so I'm gonna listen to that and hopefully that'll be nice. And then the last five books on my list are just by authors who I really love and I kind of want to read something by them this October but you know we'll see. I'm aware this TBR pile of possibilities is ridiculous. So here is A Burglary by Amy Dillwyn from 1883. I probably will read this because I've got a physical copy and it's nice to vary um, ebook reading with physical copies. I really love Amy Dillwyn. I've read two books by her before, The Rebecca Rioter and Jill, and I love them both, especially Jill. And a burglary is, you know, about a burglary. And someone is accused, but maybe they're not guilty, um, and I don't want to read too much more about it than that. To be honest, I feel like this one is definitely going to look at class, isn't it? Um, but yeah. I'm excited for this because I love Amy Dillwyn and hopefully I'll read it this October. Another book I would really like to read is The Perpetual Curate by Margaret Oliphant from 1864. This is another slightly longer one so we'll see but I am really keen to read it because I love Margaret Oliphant um, and this was another book from my long-term Victorian literature TBR um, and it's also from the Carlingford Chronicles which I've read a few books from but I haven't finished yet which is a series of interconnected novels by Margaret Oliphant set in the same town a bit like Anthony Trollope's Barsetshire Chronicles. I have to say I feel like one of the issues I'm having with my long-term Victorian literature TBR is that I have read all the shorter books on it and I've left all the longer ones till the end but there we go anyway then I have two Anthony Trollope books uh, both of which I've requested from the library and um, so I should have physical library copies of them to read which will be nice I will probably not read both I'll probably read one one of them is quite long and one of them is very short and I think I'm probably going to read the short one but I thought I would be optimistic and request both from the library just in case um, so the longer one is Ralph the Heir from 1871 I don't know anything about it but I don't need to it's Anthony Trollope I love him I've already read like nearly 30 of his books so I kind of know 
know what vaguely to expect. I guess there's going to be someone called Ralph who is an heir to something and probably the fact that he's the heir is going to be disputed in some way knowing as we troll it but we'll see. I'm excited. Um, and then there's also An Eye for an Eye which um, is a very short Anthony Trollope novel from 1879 um, and I don't know anything about this at all but you know I'm excited to read it. And then finally because there aren't enough books on this list I have A Wilder's Hand by J. Sheridan Le Fanu from 1864. J. Sheridan Le Fanu is another author who I really really love um, and his books are always like a real delight for me. He's a great gothic writer and I love the way he creates characters but I've only actually read three of his books and um, so I need to read more and Wilder's Hand has a great title so you know maybe I'll read this this October but let's be honest I probably won't. So I hope you have enjoyed my ridiculous pile of possibilities and um, I will probably read a third of these books um, and hopefully I will enjoy that third. Which third it will be I do not know but anyway that's all for now. Thank you for bearing with my ridiculous October TBR. <laughs> um, thanks so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.